I am a long time user of ZSH. And one of the reasons why I like ZSH so much is because it is very, very customizable. Now, it doesn't mean, when I say that, it doesn't mean that Bash isn't customizable. That's not true whatever, you know, whatsoever. Bash is very customizable, but ZSH is easier to customize, or at least I thought it was. It turns out that there are just as many tools to customize Bash as there are to customize ZSH. Now, it is still a little bit trickier to, to get all of the cool features of ZSH on Bash, but it is possible. Today, we're going to be taking at a, a tool called Oh My Bash. Now, before you click away from the video, if you haven't already, I know that there are some people out there that are very opposed to anything that starts out with Oh My. Especially if you are a ZSH user and you're a ZSH purist, you'll know about Oh My ZSH, which is the Antichrist to a lot of people. It is a very, it's the definition of bloatware, okay? A lot of people really don't like it if you use Oh My ZSH for various reasons, mostly because ZSH can do all those things without needing the extra stuff that oh my zsh adds to zsh so it does add cruft right but i being the lazy person that i am have always used oh my zsh basically since the beginning of my zsh days i've never had a problem with it it doesn't slow my terminal down whatsoever and i'm happy not having to do a lot of the work that i'd have to do if i didn't use it so on some of my vms now that i'm using mostly VMs for my work, I find myself using mostly Bash. Now, Bash is good, Bash is great, and I like Bash, but out of the box, it's kind of boring. So what I wanted to talk about today is Oh My Bash. Basically, it is the Bash version of Oh My ZSH, and it's pretty cool. So let me show you how to install it and how to configure it. Let's go ahead and jump in. So to install Oh My Bash, you should come here to their GitHub page, which I'll link in the video description below. It's very, very easy. Now, usually, the last thing you'll ever want to do is run a Bash script directly from the internet. Don't do that basically ever, okay? Unless you're absolutely 100% sure the thing that you're going to be running on your computer is what's actually supposed to be run on your computer. This is not the way you're supposed to do things, but we're going to do it anyways. We're living on the edge. So if you have curl installed, which I do, I'm going to take this one line. I'm going to go here and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to run it. And basically that's all there is to it. Now, what you've basically done here is added some configuration to your bash RC file that changes the way the prompt works and add some ability for Bash to have plugins, just like ZSH. Now, I'm going to talk about the look and feel of the prompt first, and we'll talk about themes, because those are the things that I prefer to you know, deal with. And then we'll talk a little bit about the plugins that are available, because those are pretty interesting as well, but they're more focused on people who use programming languages and things like that. So let's talk about... The changes that they've made to the bash rc file so if we vim into dot bash rc oh before i i should have mentioned this before you ran that one command but i apologize for that just know that when you run that one command that we just ran it will overwrite your bash rc file so if you have a bash rc file already you've overwritten it now the good news is is that it does if we do an ls here or an ls dash a here i should say you'll see a bash rc file it looks like this here. This right here is your old bash RC file. Okay, so if you have aliases in there or whatever, they're not gone. Don't panic. You can go back into this backup, get those things out, put them in the new bash RC easily enough. Uh, I just wanted to mention that just in case you had a whole bunch of stuff in your bash RC file already and you're worried now that it's gone. It's not gone. It's just in the backup file. It's okay. So let's move. Let's go ahead and look at the bash RC file that they have created for us and you'll see a whole bunch of lines here a lot of them com commented out where well, i'm not going to go through all of them but they basically what all this stuff here does is give you options for how your prompt works and how oh my bash works uh, and it's all well commented so you can go through it and basically know what everything here does 
there are a couple lines that we're going to deal with here today. The first thing we're going to take a look at is this line here, OSH theme. By default, it looks like this right here, okay? It's, this is what's called the font prompt, and it's a cool looking prompt. Don't get me wrong, it's kind of boring, but it has the, you know, that has the time that the last line was run, has your name and the host name, and then it has the directory information just like you'd expect. But the coolest part about Oh My Bash, in my opinion, is that it comes with themes. Now, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I love themes. It's fantastic. It just makes me so happy. So I'm going to show you some of the themes. So we're going to open this up, this link here. And as you can see, there are just a lot of themes that it comes with. And all of them are documented on this page here. If you've used oh my ZSH in the past, you'll notice that most of these are the exact same. As far as I'm aware, they're actually all exactly the same. I don't think that there's any. I think they cross post them to both. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. So there's Agnoster, there's Action. All of these prompts are built in, come pre-installed, and you can use any of them. And they're all fantastic. So the one that I'm going to change this to, just for simplicity's sake, is called power line. So I'm going to change this word here to power line. I'm going to save and quit. And then I'm going to go ahead and source dot bash RC like so. And then you can see the, the prompt has changed to a power line prompt. And that's the coolest part, I think, in my opinion, about bash. Uh, oh, my bash. It gives you an option to change the theme of your prompt. Now, like I said, you can do all of this stuff without Oh My Bash. It just takes work. And if you're like me and you want to be lazy about it, Oh My Bash gets you all the way there without any of that work. It's fantastic. Now, like I said, there are other themes that you can use, obviously. So we'll, let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the. Oh, before I move on, that power line and several of the other ones are going to require to you to use certain fonts. So. There are power line fonts that you can use, or you can use things like nerd fonts. I'm ha I'm using nerd font mono or power line. No, I'm using JetBrains mono nerd font. I should say, excuse me. That's the one that I'm using. You will have to have a font that includes icons in order for some of these themes to work. So if you get a, if you use this and you've, you, you follow the instructions and your prompt looks really funky, it's going to be because of the fonts install nerd fonts or at least a nerd font and then use it in your terminal and your font problem should go away. So I'm actually going to change this to Agnoster just to see a different one. It's going to be kind of the same. That is that if we right if we go here and do source dot bash RC again uh, you have to spell things right. That's what Agnoster looks like. And like I said there are a ton of different themes that you can choose from. A lot of them are kind of samey just to be honest with you, but they do exist and there's a couple dozen of them and you can, can choose between any of them. And they're all worthwhile to try out. So that's the theming aspect of Oh My Bash. It's my favorite part and we could stop the video here, but there are some other things that I can show you, namely plugins. Now, plugins are things that I'm not really interested. In. I don't use very many plugins in Oh My ZSH as well either, but there are some that I use. One of them is Git. So if we go back to the bash rc file and then go to plugins or go back up here to the plugins it's right here by default they have a couple plugins already enabled git and bash marks now they do have a page here all the plugins that they are have available most of these i don't see why you would want to use them unless you have a specific need of them but they are here for you to use so there are plugins for ansible aws a battery plugin g cloud plugin for google cloud i'm assuming one for go one for NVM, one for NPM, things like that. A lot of this stuff has to do with programming or things like that. And it adds information to your prompt. That's basically what a lot of these things do. So if you're in a Git repository, so if I go to my repo, you can see that I'm in a Git repository here and it gives you icons, right? It shows you the status of the Git repository, whether it's synced up or not. And if you have existing commits or things that are stashed or whatever, it will show that inside the prompt, which is really nice. That's what the Git plugin does. And a lot of these plugins are exactly the same. They give you information about the language that you're in or the project that you're in, if it's on a, if it has code from a certain language or whatever. So it gives you extra information inside of your prompt. 
Another thing that Oh My Bash does is it allows you to set up custom completions. Now, I'm not sure exactly how this works because I have not used it and I have not set it up because you do have to put some effort into actually creating them. Now, there are some that are, you know, existing, but if you want to have word completions inside of your shell, you can use Oh My Bash to do that, similar to what you'd get with autocomplete and ZSH auto suggestions, those plugins for uh, ZSH, or if you've used Fish before, Fish comes with a, that kind of stuff pre installed. With Bash, you actually have to do a lot of that stuff customized or custom, and you can do that with Oh My Bash very easily just by creating a file. It does give you information on how to do that here in the comment. So it does have a list of completions that you can, that already exists. So things like Composer, Conda, uh, Django, Docker, things like that. Interestingly, it doesn't have completions for Bash itself, which is interesting. I'm not exactly sure how their completions work, so maybe that, that's just not something that is, you know, something that would work. But the idea there is that it does at least exist so you can use it if you want. Now, obviously, there are other things that Oh My Bash does, so I will link to their GitHub page in the video description below. As I said, there is a wiki here that you can go through all of the features that it does have because it does add a whole bunch of other features to your bash rc file other than just themes but themes were the things that i really wanted to have so that's why i liked it so much that's all my bash now just to wrap up do you actually need this no of course not uh, all the stuff that i've shown you here the even the plugins that all my bash has all that stuff is usually just script stuff it's functions things like that that add information to the prompt all that stuff can be done manually through your Bash RC. It just takes work. What Oh My Bash does is gets you there without having to do the work. Does it add some overhead? Probably. Uh, I not. Sh I don't notice any slowdowns when I use Oh My ZSH or Oh My Bash. It just it works fine. But if you are someone who notices very small lags, maybe it does add some lag. I don't know. I know people say that it does, I've never noticed it, but that's just something to keep in mind. Personally, like I said, I'm in it for the themes. I like my prompt to be very customized, and while I still prefer ZSH because there's more that can be done with it and there are more plugins and stuff like that for oh my ZSH and there's like power level 10,000 for uh, ZSH where there isn't for Bash. It is nice to know that if you are going to use Bash, you can use something like Oh My Bash to make your prompt look nice and provide you some extra information in the form of like Git and Python and things like that. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on Oh My Bash or any of this stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I know plugins or plugin systems or things like, you know, Oh My Bash and Oh My ZSH are very controversial to some people. If you have very opinionated opinions on this stuff i'd love to hear from you too i i would love to hear from everybody you're wrong but i like all my zsh and you're, you're not going to take it away from me I, that's just kind of the way things go anyways that's it for this video uh comments in the comment section below you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast links for libera pay and youtube will be in the video description as well thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon you guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channels would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are just absolutely amazing. Uh, I, But for my patrons, just to let you know, I'm aware that I'm behind on blog posts and the Patreon-only podcast. I will be getting some of that stuff up this evening. So you guys probably won't see this. It'll probably already be up by the time you see this video. Let's just put it that way. Hopefully, I can start getting caught up on some of that stuff. Uh, work is just getting kind of a pain. But anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.